I, I just kind of rediscovered seed bombs uh, recently and thought that that would be uh, an interesting project for us, something that we might be able to promote, do a workshop on, get people together. Um, making seed bombs is something that could be um, a, an adult or a young person activity or some of both. Um, I think uh, uh, it, it's kind of like the finger painting version of gardening. You just get your hands dirty and you make something. And when you're done, you throw it away <laughs> and hope that it works. Um, uh, so I, I was able to find a little history of this. And actually, it goes back to the 70s uh, when they originally called it guerrilla gardening. And uh, what I heard was uh, uh, it started in, in New York City, but it could have started in just about any urban area where there was abandoned property that was uh, had potential, uh, but wasn't doing much of anything, where some flowering plants might be able to get a foothold. So the guerrilla gardening part of it is that is, is people that um, wanted things to grow were a little shy about trespassing. So they didn't want to go on to these properties uh, because they didn't have permission to, uh, and yet they wanted to see it transformed into something uh, not so much of an eyesore. So uh, that's kind of what the seed bombing thing has uh, evolved out of, and it's really caught on and, and spread. And if we could have the next slide. So here's uh, an image of a seed bomb that has been laying on the soil for uh, some time. And you can see it, it just kind of is a, a little meatball shaped thing uh, that's got some, uh, it's, a, it's a piece of clay. It's got some seeds stuck in it and it lays there on the ground and gets rained on, absorbs water and uh, starts to grow a plant or maybe several plants. Um, so this is something that we could do or encourage other people to do, but we would want to do it with a somewhat some amount of caution. It may technically be illegal to plant something on somebody else's property, um, but from the stories that I was able to get, um, nobody really objects to seed bombing, um, even though there may be some legal technicalities. Um, where uh, seed bombing has been reported, uh, the the community and the legal enforcement uh, side of things kind of says like, yeah, but that's okay. You know, we're this is not the kind of problem that is going to catch our attention. Uh, we'll just kind of ignore it. So it's unlikely that any uh, potential trend, trespassing uh, complaints would be enforced. Uh, but nonetheless, if we do encourage this we would have to uh, have a little bit of a disclaimer and say bomb at your own risk. Um, we don't want to be publicly promoting people to do illegal things. So that's that's my disclaimer. Uh, real easy to do. Uh, here's somebody using an old egg carton to uh, make these and then store them. So uh, simple recipe. There's lots of different recipes. Proportions vary, uh, but using some amount of compost and then clay. Um, clay can be just your subsoil or soil uh, that you may have readily on hand. There's a lot of clay soils here in Northern Ohio. Um, you can buy clay. There's uh, craft stores that, that sell powdered clay and other forms of clay that you could use, potter's clay, uh, but that gets to be expensive. Um, compared to just sticking your shovel in the dirt and pulling up something that'll work perfectly fine. Uh, some recipes include other amendments, um, not necessarily fertilizer, but something like an organic kelp meal that may be uh, somewhat rich in nutrient, maybe not much different than uh, good compost. Um, and then enough water, and you just kind of work that together into a ball with some seeds and let it dry um, so that it, it holds together and can be launched. 
somewhere or dropped somewhere. And um, that's basically the process. So it would be really easy to get the materials together and uh, have people just bring their own egg cartons and uh, make and, and take and uh, identify places where these could be put to good use and have a little and, and have some simple little uh, pollinator gardens uh, springing up in abandoned places. Uh, illustration just shows uh, the simple steps uh, that are here. Next. Um, these are seeds that I came up with as uh, possible suggestions, and I'd like to hear what anyone else thinks may be added or subtracted from this list. I was hoping to come up with things that would easily germinate, that are not seeds that are going to sit dormant for the next two seasons uh, before they tend to sprout, and things that are likely to bloom in either the first year or the second year um, in the soil. Um, and also to have some uh, variation in bloom period uh, so that some would come into bloom earlier in the season and some later in the season. So uh, those were my qualifiers as I was thinking through the kinds of seeds uh, that would go here. And I think um, partridge peas easily seeds itself down and continues to spread. So I thought that would be a good candidate for something to take over uh, uh, some vacant property. Uh, Black-eyed Susans, uh, similarly, uh, here I listed it as a biennial. Um, depending on where you look, it's either an annual biennial or perennial, uh, but it does seed itself down uh, regardless of uh, the timing or how long it lives. So it, it tends to, to fill in where there are opportunities. Uh, common milkweed is a great one to get started. Uh, and certainly once it is in place, uh, it will spread itself by, by roots and rhizomes uh, and become even thicker uh, wherever it gets established. Obedient plant, like many um, uh, mints, uh, also spread by roots and become thicker over time. Horse mint also, uh, a similar kind of behavior. Um, purple prairie clover is one of my new favorites, um, partly because of the color. It's, it's a lower growing plant, uh, but um, uh, it will also grow easily from seed uh, to the best of my knowledge in most places. And I wanted to throw in common sunflower as an annual in here because um, um, sunflower is actually a, a native even though it's been in cultivation for a long period of time, and there are hundreds of different cultivated varieties of them, uh, some of them for agricultural use. Uh, the common uh, Helianthus annuus uh, is a native North American species uh, that knows exactly what to do uh, when it's put out on the landscape and it will grow, and the seeds uh, will um, overwinter and uh, continue to grow uh, more annual sunflower plants in subsequent years. So if anyone has suggestions for what should be added or subtracted from this list, having, what is this, two, four, six, seven seed species in a single seed bomb, uh, that's quite a potent mix. And you're bound to get some kind of success uh, whether they all sprout in every, whether they all thrive in every location or not uh, would remain to be seen. Uh, but I think these are all very versatile, hardy, uh, will adapt to many different kinds of full sun settings. Uh, for more on this subject, that's a long URL to write down, but maybe uh, I can put that in the chat somehow. Uh, but I found this, if you just go to Pop Shop America uh, and look for seed bombs, uh, they've got some really good details on how this can be done. And this, this image just shows how some, some clay is spread out in a flat disc, some compost put in that, and some seeds sprinkled in that, and you roll it up like a meatball, and you're done.
uh, pretty easy concepts. Okay. And a lot of great suggestions on how to use these. One is just to use them yourself, find a place that you want to target and, and toss them, uh, but you can also use them as gifts. So here's some that are wrapped in a nice little swatch of uh, fabric uh, to hand out. And what a great conversation starter to say, hey, neighbor, here's a seed bomb. Think you can find a place to put this and get your neighbors to plant them. You know, just a, a kind of a, a way to broach the subject of planting native uh, by making simple gifts. Um, next slide. And here's here's something a little bit more fancier on a on a popsicle stick, but uh, why not a bomb on a stick? Um, uh, it's it's the same kind of idea. It's a gift. It's conversation starting. You can use them as party favors. Uh, and the next slide. Uh, some somebody was even suggesting uh, this. I believe was made with uh, recycled paper um, in, instead of clay, and then uh, they were using these uh, for like a, a wedding. Stephanie <laughs> uh, to to hand out to to members in the wedding. Uh, I can so. picture Steph now bomb uh, seed bombing uh, Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> so um there you go that's that's the whole story as i know it um and if you've got uh four minutes you want to waste i've got a video to to put onto the end of this if you can share the sound as well as the image uh if you want to do that i'm not sure how to do that however i am more than happy to transfer uh hosting rights to you because <laughs> i don't trust myself technology wise uh so um yeah i've that. tried sharing a video with sound and then the video went and the sound did so it's so just... you have to when you share your screen there's a little uh check box uh when you select what screen to share that says share with audio so it's before you actually share it uh whoever wants to try Oh, thank all right. you so for that tip. Um, I don't see. I see advanced sharing options. Yeah. So if you click on share screen, and then there should be something that comes up where you get to select which one to share, like which yes. screen window. And it should be like the bottom left-hand corner. There's a checkbox. Share sound. Oh. Woohoo. Oh. All right, let's try. Live tech support. <laughs> Thank you. I've been doing uh, wow. board meetings via Zoom for the past, I don't know how many years now. So <laughs> good right, luck. Let me see if I can do this. And this is a uh, uh, seed bombing out of control just for fun. Computer. Request a security procedure and access to Project Genesis summary. Identify for retina scan. Kirk, Admiral James T. Security scan approved. 23rd century summary, technology. Project Genesis, a proposal to the Federation. Carol Marcus. Yes. What exactly is Genesis? Well, put simply, Genesis is life from lifelessness. It is a process whereby molecular structure is reorganized at the subatomic level into life generating matter of equal mass. Stage one of our experiments was conducted in the laboratory. Stage two of the series will be attempted in a lifeless underground. Stage three will involve the process on a planetary scale. It is our intention to introduce the Genesis device into a pre-selected area of a lifeless space body, a moon or other dead form. The device is delivered, instantaneously causing what we call the Genesis effect. Matter is reorganized with life generating results.
instead of a dead moon, a living, breathing planet capable of sustaining whatever life forms we see fit to deposit on it. Fascinating. The reformed moon simulated here represents the merest fraction of the Genesis potential, should the Federation wish to fund these experiments to their logical conclusion. When we consider the cosmic problems of population and food supply, the usefulness of this process becomes clear. This concludes our proposal. Thank you for your attention. It literally is Genesis. Power creation. Have they proceeded with their experiments? Well, the tape was made about a year ago, so I can only assume they've reached stage two by now. But dear Lord, do you think we're intelligent enough to... Suppose... What if this thing we use where life already exists? It would destroy such life in favor of its new matrix. Its new matrix? Do you have any idea what you're saying? I was not attempting to evaluate its moral implications, Doctor. As a matter of cosmic history, it has always been easier to destroy than to create. Not anymore. Now we can do both at the same time. According to myth, the Earth was created in six days. Now watch out. Here comes Genesis. We'll do it for you in six minutes. I do not dispute that in the wrong hands... In the wrong hands? Would you mind telling me who's the right hands, my logical friend? Are you by any chance in favor of these experiments? Gentlemen, gentlemen, this isn't... Really, Dr. McCoy, you must learn to govern your passions. They will be your undoing. Logic suggests... Logic? My God, the man's talking about logic. We're talking about universal Armageddon. You're green-blooded in you. Bridge to Admiral Kirk. Admiral, sensors indicate a vessel in our area. Closing fast. What do you make of her? It's one of ours, Admiral. All right, well, that's it. Well, thank you, Ray. So any questions for Ray? <laughs> Computer. No, stop. No. <laughs> All right, so can I stop sharing screen? Yep, go ahead and stop sharing screen. Um, and if you want to uh, pass host back to me. Um. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> ah, resume share, new share. I don't want either one of those. Stop share. There, there you go. And then if you want to click the three buttons next to my name and switch me to host. Okay, did that do anything? Yes, thank you. I have my notification. I am host again. I feel special. <laughs> All right, so any questions for Ray? Um, yeah, okay, I'm still trying to get my screen right. <laughs> no questions? I think we just wanted to say that it's a great idea. I've seen seed bombs before. I haven't seen them used, but I'm excited for us to try them out. I might start with just giving them to people to put in their yards. I don't know if I'm ready to go toss them <laughs> somewhere, but um, I like that there's like opportunities to spread it and things we can think about and, and share. So I think it's great. Yeah. yeah. Especially when the seed bombs will annihilate all life if we throw them out somewhere. That <laughs> it creates life. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, I I was thinking, you know, the, as much as it would great be great to change the world by simply, you know, tossing a few, uh, you know, seed bombs here and there, uh, I I'm seeing a, a a way to engage and do something fun. And and bring people together and make some of these talk about the potential, um, and you know just uh, a fun hands-on kind of an event uh, that may be an inspiration to go beyond 
you know, the simple little, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, and, and to do some actual gardening. But it, it may be <laughs> an entryway to do something a little more deliberate. Very cool, right? So I actually have a question or two for you. Out of curiosity, and I don't know if you know the answers to this, but it got me thinking, how long are the seed bombs good for? I, I think they're good for a year. Uh, my thought was that we would, uh, uh, if, if we're going forward with this, is we would uh, collect the seeds we need, because there are seeds on those list I don't have. Um, or just use some seeds that I do have. But I was thinking later in the season doing that and then uh, encourage people to do a, a fall to you know early winter kind of uh, bombing with that. Um, but I, I think if you were to keep them until spring, it would still be okay. Okay, good to know. And then my second question is in case anybody wants to do one of these experiments sooner you know, with the seeds that you selected, because I know it might change based off the species selected. Um, but if anybody wants to do that sooner and later, is there a certain time um, the seeds that you selected need to be planted by or, or because I know there's certain ones that are better for need to be winter sowed versus, you know, things along those lines. Um, yeah, I, I tend to, to favor, you know, late season planting. To give the natives a chance to overwinter, because that's often the trigger, uh, is just to being out in the elements for the the rain and snow and cold and um, you know freezing and thawing cycle uh, that that triggers their germination in the spring. That's that's what I would favor. <laughs> Steph, do you want to share that with the group? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, I have a, a friend here in Columbus um, who is in the process of planning out his garden. Um, like he hired a designer to do his garden and then he's just kind of turning it into a multi-year project to do all the labor for himself. But one of the things he's planning to do is there's that little strip of garden or strip of, of yard between the sidewalk and the road. Um, and what his planning to, is, his plan is, is he's going to put out a bucket of seed bombs so that as his neighbors or kids are walking by or whomever, um, just have a little sign out that says, hey, you know, toss a bomb, um, just to help him kind of uh, seed that little lawn strip with wildflowers instead of grass. So I think that's gonna be a really cool, I think it's gonna be really cool to see. And I think it's also a really cool way to kind of like engage with your neighbors um, even if, you know, you can't always be out there in the yard talking to them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I just think it's a really clever idea and I've thought about stealing it for our house. I was about to say that might be a, a good way to introduce a pathway project as well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else guys? All right. 